Hey guys, it's Tom Box here. Welcome to MSD.TV. And for this ruling segment that you guys all love, you know why I like doing this. We're going to be talking about various common rules that we need to talk about most frequently asked ruling questions from Nightmare Goblin to Nightmares, Ash Blossom, Waking the Dragon, Alter Guys Protocol. These are the rulings that are, we have in line. And because these are some of the most meta things that are happening, let's just uh, clarify this for everyone because these are some of the more common questions I was asked at uh, MST Open Series number six. And I even have to ask online to confirm various rules. So you don't want to be screwed over. And uh, I think we want to have play with a consistent set of rules. But right now, I just want to give a shout out to Pazim from the Ruling Zone Discord. If you guys got a ruling question, go ask right there. And before I get into the segment, if you guys want to support my channel, you can do so on the Patreon link down in the description below. New proxies are coming. Uh, I believe fairy tales and <coughs> cyber dragons and that stuff is coming out. Of course, the next public set is going to be Demise Rituals. That's going to be coming out very, very soon. Now, let's go on to the rulings. All right, to kick things off, let's start with Nightmares. Now, Nightmare Goblin's most frequently asked question is, can you actually get the additional normal summon when Nightmare Goblin is not co-linked? And the answer to that is, yes, you can. And some of you guys are starting to disagree with him, like, oh, but the article in Konami's website, well, the article is wrong. The article is using the wrong conjunction in there, and it's poorly phrased to create this misconception where there is a ruling that doesn't exactly exist. And uh, just be aware of the judges, because some of the judges do rule like that. And uh, you know what? Let's arm ourselves with the correct knowledge regarding conjunctions and Nightmare Goblin. I know Nightmare Goblin is actually worded differently compared to all the other Nightmares. So let's talk about it right now. So he has the trigger. If this card is Link Summon, colon, there's your trigger. There's the activation. You can discard one card, a cost. There's your entire condition and cost right there. Uh, so you, dis you ditch your card. If this card was co-linked when this effect was activated, you can draw one card. So this is part of the effect. That's effect A, A part of the effect. Also, conjunction. Uh, this conjunction is actually pretty fun, and I'll also elaborate on that so that we're not confused. During your main phase this turn, you can normal summon one monster from your hand to your zone discard points to, in addition to your normal summon or set. And you can only use this effect once per turn, and neither player can target your cooling monster with the card effects. Okay, that's that's just a breeze through. Okay, so regarding the also, the also conjunction doesn't require the first part to happen. And note that it is completely separated. So when I break it down in a bit, so let's look into also. Also from the Konami article states, do A and also do B. In terms of the timeline, it is considered a simultaneous effect. They happen both at the exact same time and neither is required for either. So if you don't do the first part, you can still get the second part. So that seems self-explanatory enough. But a lot of people are confused because they're like, oh, but the co-link part is part of the effect. Well, the thing is the summon trigger or the trigger for the effect is with this card is link summon. So part A's effect is the co-link part. And then the second part, part B's effect is during your main phase, you're gonna get yourself an additional normal summon. That's it. They're not combined together. Also doesn't mean like, also apply the other part from the first effect. No, that's not the case. So if you do perform a goblin summon and uh, you ditch a card, you'll gain that additional normal summon to the arrow it points to. Now, second question regarding Nightmare Goblin is that if you make a new Nightmare Goblin after you triggered the first one, you sent the first one to the grave and you didn't use the additional normal summon, can you activate the Nightmare Goblin once again? And the answer is no, and you cannot use the new Nightmare Goblin's arrows as your uh, normal summon area because you kind of lost the original one. And only the, or the one that you activated previously had the uh, summoning uh, effect with it. So you, basically you lost the zones to summon into. Yeah, does that make sense? So the next most frequently asked questions regarding nightmares in general is whether or not you can use Ash Blossom Joy Spring to negate their trigger effect for the one where they discard a card and if they're coding, they get to draw one. Seems self-explanatory, doesn't it? But it's not. The answer to the question is actually you can use Ash Blossom Joy Spring only if they are co-linked. And if the monster is not co-linked and they use their discard effect, you cannot use Ash Blossom Joy Spring, even though it is technically part of the card text. And I'm going to give you the details of why. So your argument might be, oh, well, Wavering Eyes and Shadow Fusions, they both get their effects uh, negated by Ash Blossom, regardless if their conditions are met for the, uh, the searching or the sending. 
True. However, their stuff can change depending on the resolution. If during the resolution things change and the conditions are shifted, it will still work in your favor. Say for example, I activate wavering eyes while only can controlling one scale, and I pop my king gate zero along the way, and then king gate zero gets put into the pendulum zone and then gets popped, I will get my search regardless. Therefore, Ash Blossom can still negate within that same chain regardless. And same with Shadal Fusion. If you play Shadal Fusion and I decide to go, I'm going to summon a card from my extra deck because haha, it's going to be hilarious. Emergency Synchro, Urgent Tuning or whatever. And I put out a card during your uh, shenanigans of uh, Shadal Fusion. Guess what? During the resolution, you get to go into your deck instead of using your hand. So yeah, there's that. So in other words, that's why those cards can get hit regardless if they meet their condition or not because it happened on resolution. Whereas the Nightmare cards, they are predetermined thanks to their card text. And even Infernoid Tierra has a similar thing where you cannot Ash Blossom a Tierra, uh, the Inferno Tierra, uh, when, well, it activates its effect if it's fused with less than five materials. So let me just read the card text here of the condition for the draw. If this card was co-linked when this effect is activated, you can draw one card. So it checked at the activation whether or not it will gain the additional effect. And because it has already checked and even if you do shove a co-link in there like it doesn't matter you're not going to get the draw anyways because the checking was part of the activation the moment you discard a card if you weren't co-link then you're not considered for the draw and that's the reason why in front here you can actually check this ruling up on yg organization regarding the refresher on ash blossom joy spring so remember if it's co-linked you can ash it if it's not co-linked you can't ash it so there's benefits to not being co-linked if you're trying to break a board and there's benefits of coding if you want to get the additional draw. Ruling number two regarding Trickstar Light Stage and Waking the Dragon. So if your opponent uses Light Stage against your Waking the Dragon, can you send it to the graveyard and activate it? And the answer is yes, you can. The card text of Light Stage isn't supposed to confuse you, but I'll read the part that matters right now, which is uh, you can target one card in your opponent's spawn trap zone while this card is in your field zone. That set card cannot be activated until the end phase, and your opponent must activate it during the end phase, or else send it to the graveyard. So that's the part that's relevant. And so if he targets your Waking the Dragon, the question is, can you forcefully activate Waking the Dragon while it is on the field and activate it face up? The answer is no. There is no condition for you to activate the card. The only card text trigger is the graveyard trigger. And since you can't activate a graveyard trigger on the field, it's kind of like if you hit a mirror force, can you activate that mirror force? No, you cannot because the trigger was not met. It is just sent to the graveyard. It does not flip face up or anything. You just send it straight there. And because of it, Waking the Dragon will activate. And some of the other arguments that has risen up from this is, well, it's your opponent sending it to the graveyard. I'm not doing anything. It's your Trickstar Light Stage that's sending it to the graveyard. It's through your effect that it is sent to the graveyard. Because Waking the Dragon says that your opponent must send this card when it's set to the, from the field to the graveyard to get the trigger to activate. Yeah, can they actually send it to the graveyard without your light stage? No. So it's the, through the effect of light stage that they're sending it to the graveyard. And it doesn't say that your opponent chooses to send it to the graveyard. It says right here, or else send it to the graveyard. It's light stage sending it to the graveyard. So waking the dragon will trigger. And speaking of waking the dragon, if you do pop off multiple waking dragons, you can chain them in sequence, and of course, you can actually summon multiple monsters out of the extra deck. The preference, of course, is Ultimate Falcon, but how do you make a really nasty board if your opponent Black Roses you while you have three of these cards? Well, what you can do is you can go into a Link monster as Chain Link 3. That opens up additional zones for you to summon, say you go into Mrs. Radiant. Then you can put out that Ultimate Falcon as Chain Link 2. And then you can go Last Worried of another planet as Chain Link 1. And then Last Worried will trigger popping the Mrs. Radiant, putting her back into the, uh, I guess, putting her back into the extra deck. And now your opponent can't summon Kaijus to kill your Ultimate Falcon, stuff like that. Yes, that's all legal. That's all fine. So I'm going to talk about Altergeist Protocol as my last card to deal with rulings, mainly because people believe that this card does more than it actually does and kind of overpowered it a little incorrectly. Saying that this card makes it so that your Altergeist card can't be negated is a bit of an overstatement because the activation and effects of Altergeist cards that activate on your field cannot be negated. 
In other words, it's only the activated effects. It doesn't make so that all your dudes are basically immune to everything. That's not correct. But let me just go into detail. So if you're under skill drain and you have a mellow seek, mellow seek cannot attack directly. That's something you guys called out on, and I'm gonna point it out in this video. Melusi cannot attack directly because attacking directly is not an activated effect. However, if Melusi still somehow manages to deal battle damage, which is very unlikely, but if she does still manage to do battle damage, she can still activate. Just like anything under skill drain can still activate. And when she activates, if protocol is on the field, then protocol uh, will basically let her effect go through and she will be able to send a card on the field to the graveyard. So that is something that can happen as long as she's still able to do battle damage. But if she, she cannot attack directly, that's what I'm trying to say. As for every other uh, monster on the Alter Guy side, most of them have alt activated effects, so they're basically unaffected by skill drain while protocols on the field, which is a fair assumption. But what about infinite impermanence versus Alter Guy's protocol? This was an interesting one because people thought it was kind of contradictory since uh, what it says is the activate effects cannot be negated. Well, here's the thing. If infinite impermanence is activated on top of an altergeist protocol, the same column, the entire card text is negated, including that blanketing protection. The activation and effects of altergeist cards that activate on your side of the field cannot be negated. Yeah, just remove that line if you're under the infinite impermanence. And well, that means even if you try to activate altergeist protocol now, to negate the monster effect of your opponent, you'll just be losing a monster for free for cost because the Altergeist protocol will be negated by infinite impermanence. That's just my clarity. So if you actually combine that with skill drain, it becomes a little bit confusing on what's negated, what's not. Just know that if you get your protocol negated, the protection line is removed because that is not an activated effect and therefore it gets kind of thrown out the window. All right, guys, so that is all I got for this video here. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you learned something about the nightmare stuff, hit me up with a thumbs up. And uh, if there's more confusing rulings, you can leave it down in the comment section below. Th special thanks to the ruling zone. Check it them out. I put a link down in the description below. And then you can ask those ruling gurus what the hell's going on with the game. And special thanks to the Patreons. And don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV and hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job. And you can also subscribe to MSD.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MSD.TV and I'll see you next time.